Okay, do you have any other oh, question? Nice. Because it is one o'clock. Yeah. <coughs> Call the meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> if you finish that, I'll show it to you. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have before us the agenda. Are there any additions or modifications to the agenda as presented? Where do, since we do have a legal bill, should we just put it in under trustees? That's that's our right. right. Oh, legal invoices. Okay. All right. I just did no addition. Okay. Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. That's a moot. Second. Mr. Paxson? Yes. Mr. Kratz? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. Again, make a motion to approve the payroll in the amount of $270,550.34. Second. Mr. Paxson? Yes. Mr. Kratz? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. Make a motion to approve the bills in the amount of $201,152.29. Second. Mr. Kratz? Yes. Mr. Paxson? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. Uh, make, I'm sorry. make a motion to approve the minutes, uh, regular meeting minutes held August 4th, 2014. A second. Mr. Kretz? Yes. Mr. Paxson? Yes. Ms. Graff? Yes. I don't see any citizens in the audience wanting to speak. Anyone else wants to speak? So we will move on to the next order of business. No old business, no new business. Mr. Administrator, this is Harry F. Arm. <laughs> US 35. Thank you, Board. Um, in your packet, there is a draft resolution that the county prepared that is uh, going to be circulated between the county, City of Xenia, City of Beaver Creek, uh, potentially uh, as well as Xenia Township uh, and us. Um, however, after uh, the meeting that took place Friday um, with ODOT, um, I'm not prepared to bring this forward right now because they're going to provide some additional information on cost uh, this Wednesday is what we were told. Um, I talked to the county administrator. He's also um, postponing any movement on this as well, as well as the city manager until we get those numbers from ODOT. Good. Okay. Thank you. Can you give us a review? Or maybe Mr. Kress, were you there? Uh, actually, Mr. Oh, Paxson, myself, and uh, Mr. Zaharoff were there. Um, and ultimately, the um, Keith Smith uh, provided an update and a uh, kind of two different scenarios as far as an overall cost. Um, the project without uh, right of way acquisition is roughly $98 million. They need approximately $8 million for right of way um, acquisition. Um, ODOT was looking for support from local municipalities for the 20% local match for the $8 million um, to go ahead with the right-of-way acquisition. And what was discussed at the meeting essentially was that if we, as, munis as local municipalities, sign on for the $8 million or support of the $8 million for right-of-way, we are in effect signing on for the entire project. And so then it became a discussion of whether you sign on and, and propose to move forward with the project all at once, uh, meaning the $98 million, tackle the whole thing, all three interchanges at one time, as well as the realignment of Shakertown, um, or you break it into phases. Um, Mr. Smith brought up during that meeting that um, it would be possible, and if, if uh, City of Beaver Creek, Beaver Creek Township, or Green County would agree to take on small portions of the project as local projects that could reduce the, quote, ODOT uh, portion, um, such as the realignment of Shakertown or um, Heller Lane or access to Premier and Tractor Supply. Um, those projects in and of themselves are one to three million dollar projects, essentially. So. Um, Otherwise, uh, we talked about phasing the project out um, into two or three phases. The reality of that is that the estimate of cost of $98 million and the breakdown if we went into individual phases 
was all based on today's dollars. Um, the project is projected, if it were funded, which it's not, if it were funded, the project is projected to go forward in 2017, 2018 in the initial stages. Um, essentially what I asked and some others asked for as well was that they recalculate those costs based on future value, um, not present uh, construction costs, and they build some inflation into that so we know truly what we're signing on for and that we don't have a $98 million project really become a $150 million project at the end of the day. So he's gonna go back, uh, they're gonna do a little bit more due diligence, um, build in some inflation into their budgets, and come back with a more accurate cost analysis. Um, so, uh, Mr. Paxson, did I miss anything? No, that's pretty good. <laughs> what was the <laughs> local <laughs> match that they were requesting? 20%. 20%, yes. So. I would assume, though, if, if we signed on to that um, easement, $8, $8 million easement thing, whatever the cost would go go up from that point, they would have to absorb that cost. That would be the, my guess. The right-of-way acquisition, right? Yeah. yeah. Anything right. above that's, that. That's their anticipated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, so, and again, like, until it's completed, it's not, it's it's always anticipated with right-of-way acquisition. Yeah. So. Yeah. But at this point, we're kind of in a waiting stage for them to come back with more information and a little more detailed information. Um, like I said, I challenged I, you know, how we, someone could circulate a resolution without uh, having uh, a factual cost estimate. So that's that's what triggered the delay. So. Okay. Was there any discussion? Because I had a prior engagement. What is any discussion whatsoever on how the local match was going to be generated? Didn't really get to that because we couldn't come up with a solid cost. Yeah, we, there wasn't a solid number to work off of. Um, there was discussion um, after the meeting amongst the some of the local jurisdictions of having smaller breakout discussions and meeting once we get that cost, and then you know who who's involved in that discussion: the county, the city, the township, uh, as there are other communities as well, uh, Montgomery County. Uh, city of Xenia, Xenia Township. So um, there was some discussion of breaking that group into smaller groups. Someone talked to talks about the match and funding from local jurisdictions. Okay, there was some discussion about the um, the project being a, a, a benefit to the region and the um, the travel of, of commerce up and down the highway. The, Perhaps maybe it would be, you know, there could be a, um, a discussion regionally and get regional support on this instead of locally, which would um, spread out the cost of the $8 million. Um, There is one possibility that... Uh, and the RPC was there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, there is a piece there that I know. Uh, I forget you can borrow a certain amount and so, pay to... Uh, yeah, this, right. I forget what it's called. but. As long as it's, I think the project has to be 15 million or over, which is means you don't do the 8 million part because you have to go for the 15. But uh, that's one option. There, I think there's some others that could be discussed. But thank you. Right. And, uh, MVRPC was well represented. They did bring up that loan program that they could participate in that if the if the numbers matched out. Um, and that was triggered by, like Mr. Paxson said, there was discussion about if, if, the tr if this is truly a regional project, um, the question was asked, what is Montgomery County or any of the outlying communities uh, participating in this process? And that's where MBRP said that's where they would step in. And that's why that project, that particular possibility was generated because of projects such as these. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Board. Okay, HR, Mrs. Gustafson. Hi, good afternoon. I actually don't have anything for the agenda today, but I did submit my bi-weekly report. If you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. I just had a couple questions here. Um, one of there is a um, there was a meeting with an employee on an injury. Was that an on-duty injury or is that an off-duty injury? We've had both in this pay period. Okay, so there's workman's comp um, mm -hmm. claims? Yeah. Okay. That's why at the top it has uh, one claim so far for this year. Okay. That's been on the report for probably 
weeks. Six weeks now? A couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. A couple meetings. Uh, I just saw the one that said meeting with uh, with an employee on pending leave. Yeah, it's the same case. It's not an additional plan. Okay, that's all. And the other question I have was meeting with uh, DC Marks on hiring. Mm -hmm. Is isn't he the operations chief? Is uh, is it the um, administrative chief uh, over hiring, or is it the no? Deputy Chief Marks is the operations chief now. Is it Scott the is the administration chief. It's been like that for probably a year and a half. Okay. So the administrative chief is not in charge of the hiring. It's the operations chief. Well, technically, he's not in charge of the hiring either, but I went to him with some specific questions, and he's actually sitting in on the interview panel. Okay. So that's why I met with him. Okay. All right. That's all. Okay. Thank else? you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Amright. <laughs> Um, first of all, a correction to make on the uh, in my biweekly report. I refer a couple of times to your next meeting being September first. It's September second because of the Labor Day holiday. Um, and in addition to what's in the report, um, I'd like to point out that, that we are now in the public comment period for the Solid Waste Management District five-year plan. That com public comment period began on, on August 8th and will extend to September 8th. That is the deadline for receipt of written comments on the plan. Uh, there will be a public hearing in the evening on Ledbetter Road uh, on September 10th on the plan. At that public hearing, both verbal and written comments will be accepted. Um, the, the full plan is available online, and it, the, the, it is 160 pages, some of it just dizzyingly boring. Um, but to, to highlight, I, I don't know whether you've received them, but the, there are both executive summary at the beginning of the plan and there's a plan overview that's a point by point overview of the plan now would be a good time to look at that and if you see anything alarming uh, now would be the time to take a look at the, the full plan and uh, give any feedback to uh, solid waste you can go through me if you'd like to do that or directly with, with David Stortz. In our mail, um, they just gave us, the county sent this, Green County, they gave us the plan overview. Okay. So that's if the you think the executive, the okay, do you think the executive summary, whatever it is, if we should get the additional piece, just make sure we have it? That's it. Um, yes, I, I can uh, uh, download the, the entire plan and so no, if you want or any piece of it. I will point out that probably the most interesting pieces, the most interesting sections, sections four and five, four describes how the solid waste management district is organized today. Five um, uh, talks about the changes that will be made under the new plan. Those, those may be the most interesting. Eight, uh, section eight is the budget. Um, that's of some interest as well. Um, uh, let's see. Um, ratification then would be scheduled for October. The um, plan, as you know, must be ratified by the largest uh, jurisdiction in the county, which is the city of Beaver Creek, by the county commissioners and by 75% of the. Is it 75% of the jurisdictions or? Jurisdictions that represent 75 percent of the population. I don't remember which of those. Two I think areas, it's the. I think it's the first one. 75 percent of the jurisdictions other than the largest city. Yes. Yeah. Um, but that ratification process is too late for making changes. Once once this public comment and public hearing periods are done and and the policy committee has chance to make updates and then it's a yay or nay an up or down vote on what they submit to us for ratification so um, uh, so take a take a quick look at it now so and if you have any questions for me i'll be happy to 
Chase Dallas and ask you to for you. If you want more information, I can, I'll be happy to get it. You had just mentioned there were two pieces you thought were important, and we only have one. So the executive summary, is that? That's part of the um, overall report. Yeah, that's section uh, two, evidently. Let's see. I'll get that to you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Are you still getting permits in? I'll, I'll get the executive summary and I'll distribute it to you electronically. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Other than that, if there are any questions <coughs> on the bi report, we have to address them. The Zoning Commission meeting satisfied uh, the residents that attended. That was, that was my sense. Um, people came in with, uh, there wasn't a lot of upset in the room. It, it, people had some misunderstandings and the way we ran the meeting was to sort of start from scratch and in introducing, because so many people, this, this room was packed and so many people in the room had not been exposed to the, the plans before. So the um, chair uh, and, and I introduced the plan and outlined the steps that have been taken in the approval process to date. And then we invited the applicant to do a presentation as well, which he did, his representative did. By that time, frankly, most of the questions had been answered and mis misconceptions had been corrected. I mean, the, the Homeowners Association at uh, Country Club of the North, uh, someone said water park, or no, amusement park. park. And so we got a bunch of calls the next day and so forth. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. And, and so once people sat through a, a presentation outlining the project, their questions were answered. There were a few concerns expressed, the same concerns that have already been expressed by the, um, by the commission itself. And, and I got the sense from people as they were leaving that they felt like we were managing the process well. And they didn't feel any, any need to, um, any need to express any misgivings or and we have the we have the homeowner association being copied on notifications. Yes, any, anyone uh, anyone who's contacted myself or the zoning office who are outside that 500 right. requirement, yes. we are collecting those names and phone numbers as well as email addresses, so that we can send any type of notica notification from the zoning commission and when meetings are, or eventually when the trustees hear it as well. Okay. The commission began work on, on constructing <clears throat> resolution by. Um, going through all the permitted uses item by item and weighing in on whether they wanted them included or excluded and if excluded then why and so on and so forth. So that, that kind of um, work nitty gritty was, was begun after the public presentations were, were done and um, Ms. Kirk and I will be working together on crafting the actual resolution uh, for initial presentation at the next meeting in September. Okay. And the, the fourth, I think. The, uh, how, how closely tied is this project uh, as far as it happening to the trade line uh, 35 interchange? Is, is one conditional on the other? I, no, I would. Well, the, the Route 35 work is definitely not contingent on this project Correct. happening. Is this project the, contingent on it? However, the opportunity for economic development in the region certainly lends support um, for the Route 35 project. I mean, District 8 is able to go to Columbus and say the word jobs, and, and, and that that there's, there's, there's sort of a symbiotic relationship, but not exclusive relationship between them. Either one could go forward without the other. Um, it's, it's a matter of speculation as to whether the, the current status of the Route 35 job was maybe perhaps a reason for this 
uh, public presentation of a project that's frankly been floating around for 20 years. Why now? Well, possibly it's because we're at the next phase for the Route 35 work and, um, and they felt, and the owners, the applicants felt like this would be a good time to, to make it public, to bring, bring, it, bring it up to everyone's attention. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Andre? But I'm speculating when I say that. I understand. Well, I didn't know if they, uh, anybody had made a specific statement yeah, that this is conditional anybody. on this project yeah. happening or not yeah. happening. No. Uh, okay. both, the only party, both parties have said no to the right. question. Yeah, the biggest concern I think that most of us would have is that, and that almost goes back to the right-of-way acquisition, is that if we know what the plans are, and the plans are adopted, and it's sort of a go-ahead, then any planning around, uh, zoning around and planning around that intersection would be prudent. Whether you build it before or after, you take into consideration rather than just build it assuming it's not going to be there to be destroyed. So I think that that would be the uh, interaction of the right. two rather than dependency. Right, we certainly don't want to build in any conflicts with any of ODOT's plans as we move forward with these. But at the rezoning stage, there's frankly little danger of that, that those kinds of details get worked out at the site plan uh, approval process, which, I mean, who knows, it's pretty far down the road, I think, in my opinion. Okay. I had one other question on the employee recognition policy. So mm -hmm. that has been reviewed now, or it sits with Dr. Grace? Um, I th we're still waiting to hear from uh, the consultant on, w with her input. Um, we're prepared to conduct another meeting of our local committee once we do get that input. I believe it to be coming soon, but I, okay. I, I haven't heard she was on directly. The right. And she, we met last week. Okay. On that okay. True. Great. Okay. It's been nine months. It's I time. Know, it's it, time to have the baby. But as soon as we get yeah, it, no, no. it, it gets to be a long. Mm -hmm. And I, I frankly don't expect wholesale revisions. Um, okay. Beyond okay. what the board recommended to us when we presented that first draft. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, Anything else? No. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It. Board, I sent um, this Mr. Erickson's um, kind of bi-weekly report um, um, over the weekend, so. <laughs> yeah, if you had, had any questions on any the events of the last two weeks? Just the telephone, and I'm glad that you <laughs> did address that. Yes, I know I called yeah, what, one day last week, yeah, and the line was busy, and the line busy. was busy. So I finally called someone on a cell phone saying, there's something wrong with your telephones because the lines aren't, you know, I know that when I get that busy signal, then there's something wrong. So obviously, I don't think anyone here knew about it until you now we, we said, oh, there's a problem here. So thank you for getting it. Yeah, it uh, was uh, several communities who use the same service uh, throughout uh, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky were out of service. Uh, off and on until yeah. Wednesday. We didn't get a lot of work done when you don't get interrupted by phone calls. Yeah. The fiber line, obviously there was a major fiber line that was cut in Columbus that yeah. affected three states. I saw up here on Beaver Valley Road, somebody hit the phone box that sticks out of the ground and covers off of it. The wires are all hanging out. And <laughs> yeah, that's someone else's, I guess. And it's one if that's uh, causing an issue with some of this stuff there as well. Well, the, the service outage we had experienced last week was all uh, uh, fiber line. Fiber lines. <laughs> Any major concerns, issues, or challenges? No, not uh, nothing I think of. You know, Jeff's due back sometime tomorrow. Okay. Did you have, uh, other than the phones, did you have any issues? Uh, I so just take a report them? about the uh, email. I don't know if you all noticed you got a big junk of them all at once cluster last week. That was the Barracuda software spam folder kind of acted up. 
So you got that working and had to go through mesh and manually fire all the old stuff that hadn't passed through yet. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Parks. Good afternoon, board. I have a few items on the agenda today. Um, the first item on the agenda, with regret, I accepted the resignation of Brad Fogel from my service worker in one position. His last official day on the book is Friday. His last official day here was last Thursday. Um, I would like for approval to move forward with filling that full-time position. Um, I'm bringing a candidate back to the next meeting for approval. Um, my thought is at this point, I'm probably going to offer it to my part-time employee, but I have not had a conversation with him because I don't want to have that conversation unless we can move forward. Um, <clears throat> and with the second full-time vacancy I have, at this point I'll backfill with another 1,500-hour employee until we get all the way through this audit and see exactly where we need to stand. Um, <clears throat> uh, man, I, I don't have a problem filling in the full-time position. Mm -hmm. I do have a question in this legal. one. If, if somebody writes a letter of resignation and they name their official last day of work, can they choose before that last day to not um, move on is it that they can choose to that last that last minute so if we hire somebody else before they actually leave and that person decides not to leave we don't have we can't force them to leave can we even though they've written a letter of resignation and all that well I mean technically I mean they're at will so I think once they give the letter of resignation I think it's reasonable for the employer to assume that that is a resignation if well, he came back and said, well, wait a minute, I've changed my mind. Yeah, yeah. And if you've already filled that position, I don't think he has a reasonable expectation of yeah. keeping his position at that point. I mean, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. 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 Until they've actually... I mean, could he been, come back and, and say yes, process. but that doesn't mean that you all would necessarily have to, have to keep him on. Right, I think the question is, do we have a legal liability to keep that position open until his last day on the yeah. plan? I mean, can I we... Okay. Yeah, if he had a change of heart, can we say, well, sorry, you've already resigned, but in, in effect, he really hasn't because he hasn't actually quit. That's just a question I have when we, when we start crossing, hiring somebody before somebody's actually left, say, change of heart, job fell through, whatever, and then, you know, oh my gosh, I can't do this now. I have to stay here. So that was just a question I had. Wise. I think what you're asking though is just the to, to get a consensus that yes we should go recruit another employee yeah, not necessarily right. hire them before I will bring the recommendation to the next meeting right. and, make it and by that time you will have had the vacancy yeah. yes and I'm, I I saw that and I appreciate it. I appreciate the heads up like that that's how I that's how I prefer to see it but it gives us a chance to ask a question before right. that actually happens what I don't want is another situation like I did last time where I filled the regular part time and then yeah. we got to the 1500 hour and then it was. Yeah. And I appreciate it. I learned that. from okay. my mistakes and it will never happen again. Okay. okay. So there was a discussion you with all the departments on the hiring practice that, was, that we discussed yeah. last okay. time. Yeah. So you don't, we don't really need a motion, but you have a consensus of the board that yes, the position, when it, as it is open, bring a recommendation to us for the well, filling of that there's position. There's an example motion in your packet yeah. on the right. page Yeah, I noticed that. But since we are not actually hiring someone, but just, he just wants to know should he go ahead. And I think I got consensus of all of us that yes, I think so. that this particular position yeah. will be open, Okay, fill it. And bring it back to us for the next meeting so we can do the official hiring. And I will have the resolution and all that done for the next okay. meeting. If I find a candidate willing that's currently on staff as a part time employee, otherwise it might take a little longer. He decides not to, but I seriously doubt that. Um, the second thing I have on the agenda back in the spring, <coughs> as we do like every two or three years, we bring a company in to test our bucket truck that we use 
in their department they came back with a list of recommendations of repairs before they would give us our safety certificate <clears throat> uh, we finally got our price back after many phone calls i don't think they wanted to do it in the first place but the price of repair is over thirty thousand dollars i paid 15 for the truck used I would like to move forward, but I don't want to put a lot of time into it unless we're going to replace it. I'm going to look for another used one because there's companies out there that I can get a used one with a certificate, probably for the same money I had in repairs for that one, if not a little less. And I do believe it's $50,000 is the bid limit. So I would be well underneath yeah. that. Yeah. But before I put a lot of time into going to investigate that and running those kind of things down, I want to make sure that the board's willing to move forward if I find something because that, that truck we use a lot of times in the winter to do roadway tree clearing we use it to change bulbs at the firehouses actually it doubles as a sign truck so we keep a lot of our sign stuff on it <clears throat> along with our saws so that when we get called out at night for either a tree down or signs down they just grab it and go I didn't think when we first bought it we'd use it as much as we do, but we use it a lot. Um, <clears throat> so there's this new one, newer one that you get. A, new, a used one would be newer than the old one. Oh, yes. Okay. Probably so it would be a newer used vehicle. Several years. Um, and there's a couple companies out there that buy them from utility companies. Some of them have higher mileage, but either they're reconditioned or uh, you know you don't tell you where it came from but they also when you get it you get that here's your DOT inspection which is something we currently don't have and the one we currently have is parked whether I use it as a trade-in or I put it on gut deals I'll never put another guy up in the bucket okay. I have a couple questions. The who does the safety certification? Is well, that Alltech, which is the company that okay. has the. Uh, How often do they do you have that truck certified annually? We're supposed to have it annually, but we do it like every other year. Okay. So how long has it been since it was certified? Roughly, I mean, last year or a couple years? It's probably been a couple years. Okay. And, so, and the big thing this time around is all the cabling system needs to be replaced because it's. The recommendation is it's hit its limit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the new the new used vehicle that you would purchase would be certified. Yes. Prior to us buying it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so a lot of you're not going to. What I'm going after is if you buy something from Ritchie Brothers Auction, who has a lot of these trucks on their auction lot on a regular basis. When I drive up and back forth between Columbus and here, same with medic units. I, there's no assumption that it's certified right so to buy a used one that is not certified then you could potentially right and it's there's a peace of mind if you buy it that right. already has a certification it's utility trader um, they send this stuff they usually send this stuff every once a month and you can go out and you, you can find it you can do uh, recondition and it has the certificates it has listed with it and those are the only kind of things i'm going to look for is okay. something that comes in the door that i've already got a certificate for because i don't want to go buy something and then have to dump a bunch of money into because i actually did that with the 94 when we bought it because i think we bought it off a used car lot someplace back in the day so this okay. uh, if i understand correctly this is an unbudgeted expense but right. we want to essentially use dollars that we had budgeted for the pickup truck right. uh, that we deferred we can a couple months ago. defer and I'll piece the dodge as long as it'll go back in the fleet. Okay. <clears throat> so, and the amount we budgeted for that truck? 30000 30, that's what I thought. Okay. Do we need an answer? I'm sorry. <laughs> you already answered a couple of my questions. And one of them was how often we use the truck, and it sounds like you use it often enough to have one it sounds like you have a dual duty so to speak mm -hmm. can you um get it inside the base to change the light bulbs in the base or yes, how you, you can yeah since that, three we've changed a couple fans in that building 
with yeah. the bucket truck. All right, and I'm going to have someone high enough up there where. All right. Um, so, joint purchasing and joint using a, a truck like that might be out of the question because it might be used on a spur of the moment or not all your work is necessarily planned with this right. with this vehicle. So, all right, that was another question I have. Okay, so eleven thousand dollars to fix it. Is that what I heard you say? Thirty-two five. Thirty-two five. To, to fix it. To yeah. fix it. To oh. certify it. Thirty-two thousand dollars. Yeah. Thirty-two thousand dollars. Yeah. Places on the bucket itself that are cracked, which are no biggie to you and I. Yeah. But they won't certify it with those in there. Yeah. Um, because electrical and that kind of thing. Yeah. Or? Well, the, all the cabling. The cabling is the big expense. It's That's the big expense. Okay. Wow. Okay. So it says repair for 32.5 or buy something newer that's already certified for 30 or less. Yeah. That's the choices we have. Well, that seems like. Uh, well, I, and I'll put the time into it if you're willing to move forward. Yeah. Uh, What's the consensus, Mr. Chris? Do you believe you can buy one for 30,000? 27.5 is the last one I found last week. Okay. When I was writing this up, but I haven't, okay. like I said, delved into it too far. And I'd like to. Would so, it? I would like to see is if, if if it's possible and I don't know what the it's at the, the the will of the board ultimately is if we could retain some of that thirty thousand um, as uh, a setback essentially to for any unforeseen issues that come up with a used piece of equipment which they always do um, right. so if we could buy it for twenty six and hold four back or something you know what I'm you know where I'm heading with this right it might just a reserve yeah. right it, my goal is. Is the one that I currently have. If they won't give me what I think is fair in trade, which is probably not much, we can put it on gut deals. Mm -hmm. And I'll be real honest with you, there are tree trimmers out there, sure. private citizens, that'll say, we'll pay you. That's kind of how I want to offset that cost. Yeah. But you say, see, from us, uh, again, I'm not sure we need a motion to bring us back from project, but we're saying no greater than thirty thousand, preferably significantly under, if possible. Just to, just to have some sort of reserve. So. Right. But yeah. we we agree with you that you should be looking, spending the time to look for a replacement vehicle uh, for the bucket truck that can no longer be certified. Right. Worthwhile, that worthwhile exercise. Yeah, well, then we're to the next thing on the list. So far, you have two for two. Mm -hmm. And this is good. This is an exercise. Ah. <laughs> You're um, saying we don't have any salt. Well, the no. Swafford G group that we went with, which is 101 entities in southeastern Ohio, out of 250,000 ton we bid, we got one fifth of that bid back. A fifth. A fifth. Wow. Now, in Greene County, out of our 20, 28 agencies in Greene County <clears throat> that are part of the Swap for G group, we got four bids back. Yeah. Uh -huh. City of Beaver Creek, Bellbrook, Sugar Creek, and the City of Zena. How were they so lucky? Um, we're not sure. I'm not sure to call them luck. <laughs> yeah. With this bid, there are some caveats. You have to order it by October 1st, take delivery by November 1st, and that's all you get for the year. And and so, what was the, uh, how much was it last year per ton? He has that on there. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like it was something about 50 to 55. It was lower than 60, I think. Right. 5478. Right. And this year they're going at exceeding 90. 9943. Yeah. I just heard it. That's how I knew Okay. Which, which also means that, like in the previous bid packages, that if we do run out of salt, we're going to be paying market value, unlike we did this in the years okay, past, but, where we had a set cost for right. the extra. Salt. What's the North American number? What's that column represent? The 100, 
They also bid. Okay. However, with theirs, the caveat is 25,000 ton. That's it. Okay. Swap for G figures out who gets it. Um, so who's Dayton, who's Dayton going to buy it from? I will say this morning, we had a meeting at the Green County Entities at the engineer's office. Mm. We walked, all walked into that meeting with, I think the total bid for Green County was 14300 We were going to divide it so you could get your average snowfall <clears throat> amongst the group at Green County. As we were sitting there talking, that's this year. What happens if this same thing comes up next year and it's all Montgomery County and Warren County that gets the bid? So I think we're going back to swap for you and say, let's put all this all together, divide it amongst the entities the best we can to get us through. <clears throat> With that, that being said, we're waiting to hear back on that answer. Also, with that being said, all the Green County entities this morning are going to work on a snow removal policy for the county for a level of service. We'll see where that shakes out. Um, I think what we're used to in Beaver Creek, Beaver Creek Township, not gonna happen. You're not going to see that anymore, just just because the salt's not there. Um, but we're trying to get it countywide so that consistency. Consistency. Yeah, no, it's, 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 right. I hate to use Xenia, but you leave Xenia, come into Beaver Creek, and then go into Fairborn. All of them look about the same. So if you like the main roads, your main thoroughfares to the Platts. You throw a little salt there, but other than that, you plow it off and you get what you get. And that's Thanks. because we'll be sharing, where when we could acquire our own, we could do it, our own policies. Right. And we had sufficient, with that, the lack of sufficient availability spread apart, we want it all to be uniform. That is, that is correct. That is, that is what I took away from the meeting this morning okay. at the county level. Um, How much do we have? How much do you have in the barn there? I have probably about 200, 300 ton. And the reason I didn't fill is because I didn't have the money in that account to fill until I got to about this time of year because of last water <coughs> drained the gas tank down quite a bit. If you took the collective um, the cities and townships in Green County and went back to North American, could you get it? Do you think what's your feasibility of getting it at the Cargill price to the city of Beaver Creek or lower? Slim to none. It, it, and here's because, what, because they know they have it. Yeah. Here, here's what's happened is because of last one, everybody went over. So as soon as we'll say February, March, where they can start moving material again, where they would be adding to their stockpile, well, as soon as it was coming off the barge, it was hitting trucks to be delivered. So that stockpile was gone. So what they brought in. This summer, everybody's barns were empty, and those that had the cash filled them up. So now that stockpile is gone again. So they're bringing, I think the cargo bid is from Chile. And that, that's one aspect. The second aspect is last year when companies bid, like cargo usually comes out of Columbus everybody south of Columbus and around the Columbus area, we went through that stockpile. So now they had to haul it from Cleveland. So their cost went up. So they're now trying to recoup some of that cost at the same time. We're, we're kind of open. If we can get this worked out, like in January, February, I think the goal or December, January, go back out and see where that new price might be and rebid it as a group and see if more becomes available. But at the same time, we're not guaranteed. So we're trying to put that contingent plan in place now to make it work. 
puts the farmer's almanac say for the winter. <laughs> in the Weather Channel say in January, February, and March is supposed to be less precipitation and warmer. I'll take that one, but <laughs> I hope not to see that one. I've heard frigid, frigid cold, but average snows. My resource. Yeah. So is there any action we need to take now? This is just an awareness. This is kind of an awareness. And there's another piece to this. Um, since we didn't go with the Green County, put up to 14,000, which would have got us 403 tons. Could I have made that work? Yeah, I could have made that work. If we go back to the group, I think I might be getting 260. Which will put me at about three. We just change the way we do things. With that being said, after the meeting, I met with Mr. Thonro and Mr. Volchak from the city. They're, I, I do believe they're taking a whole 8,500 ton to distribute because they didn't want to give it back to mm -hmm. Cargill. Because if you give it back, it's gone. I'll go put it someplace else. <coughs> um, they are trying to figure out some kind of plan on where they can take it and then say not as much for us but for some of the other places to make a plan so that we'll say Xenia Township if they wanted to get salt they give Beaver Creek a check for 100 tons of salt Beaver Creek loads they Xenia's trucks Xenia hauls it home <clears throat> I made the offer this morning to help them in any way we could. With the plan in mind, we'll be first in line. I hope. But kind of gave them, you know, if they need a place to deliver some of it, we have space at our place. Um, the other thing is loading it and unloading it. Offer for that. Probably be a 30 day period with our loader and a guy dedicated to the loader to do that. But it's kind of trying to work together to get all of Green County's needs met the best we can. So that offer is out there if you hear rumblings about that. This would be getting back with me on what the final plan will be. Are there plans to use more sand or other kinds of alternatives? We haven't. We have got to that point. Okay. Now, like the GML, we'll probably recalibrate ours to use more of that with less salt on, I'll say, our artillery roads like factory and some of those, some of the stuff in the plats. I'm still trying, trying to get my head around what direction we're going to take is once we see the county plan or what we come up with as entities in Green County as a policy. And once that comes out, I think it was the consensus of that group this morning to get it out there, get it back to the elected officials so that all of you have, we're on the same playing field when it comes to, hey, this winter, snow removal has changed. Why? Hey, we can't afford it anymore at $100 a ton. And we're looking for different ways to do it and, and you know, different types of materials to use. So that's where we're at at this point in the game. There's more information that comes available, I'll pass it on. Yeah. It could affect emergency services late in the year, actually. Could. Yeah. You know, you change the plan there. And, and nothing says that. I still won't have guys out there plowing it, but it might, might not be putting salt down. <laughs> putting salt down. I mean, if it gets deep enough that you can't get your car around, I'll go plow it off to get you to the main drag of the plat and then get you out on the main road. And those might be plowed and salted, but I think that's what we're down to at this point with what we're, what's facing us currently. Yeah. Winter of 78 the days we just had the trucks bringing, plowing in the emergency vehicles and out, and that's all it took for two days. So, you know, hopefully we don't have that again. Well, actually, 
actually we, we kind of have that plan in place now. They can call right. us when we're out on the road. We've got a meeting. Okay. So that's okay. all of the agenda items I have. Um, my biweekly report, I'll answer any questions. The one highlight there is factory road has turned out to be a project. It's going to be ongoing for a couple weeks. Last Monday we found a catch basin and some tile that nobody knew was there. So we've got it all uncovered. Um, Empty or filled? Oh, it's full. With sediment. Yeah, yeah it's full. Full sediment. Yeah. Is um, there a map, um, county map of the board those catch basins on? Mm -hmm. Technically, it's on county property, so it's part of their infrastructure. All right. And the guy that was there for 20 years comes out and goes, I think there's a catch base in there. We found it 18 inches down under sludge. Hmm. So we got it uncovered, which has caused us to go back and do some more re-ditching, ditch work. Um, kind of brought the county engineer's office on as a partner in this uh, with some technical advice and also some material cost because get to the one pipe that goes underneath the road, probably going to have to go down another two feet right off the edge. And so instead of us buying the pipe, we worked a deal this morning, I'll put it in, you give me the pipe, which they agreed to. So we're kind of working together with them and then Sanitary came in with their jet back and threw out all the pipes from where we're working south. Where does that catch basin and pipe lead to? Uh, ultimately, it leads to the river. So theoretically, if we clear it, theoretically it'll help. Or, I think it will. Help. Or raise the river. <laughs> no. <laughs> we haven't got to Plan C, which is down at that end, but we did find a pipe at that end. We haven't seen it in six years, but we know where it is now. That's the biggest I've seen. The deepest I've seen that ditch in a long time. So <laughs> next time you drive by, it'll be deeper. <laughs> well, we we added, we actually, Don't go off the side of the road. Actually, we added cones today um, just to give people fair warning. And our part of our dilemma was either we added another 10 feet to that 32 inch tile, it's the 36 inch tile that's there, or we put up guardrail. Mm. Yeah. I prefer to have the tile because A, it's less expensive now that the county's going to donate that. And B, it's not, besides cleaning it, it's not going to be a constant nightmare when somebody runs off and tears the guardrail out and you have to put it back up. And sure. Just by the work they did on Friday, it dropped the tile that's always, that we're working on the other side, on the, on the creek side, the Beaver Creek side, it dropped about three inches. Um, and you can go by and you can see the water level where it used to be and where it was dropped. And that was just in the 24 hours that they uncovered it and cleaned it out on Friday afternoon. Yeah. Because there was a, coming from the north, there was a field tile. When I say field tile, it's an eight inch pipe with holes drilled in, bedded in gravel. We're not quite sure at this point where it goes, but Sanitary has been gracious enough to tell us that they'll camera it for us and to help us figure out where it goes. So. It's kind of been interesting to watch all three entities yeah, work kind together. of work together down there to get something accomplished. I think we all face the same issues. You're in sync with uh, Mr. Amrine and uh, uh, Mr. Geyer as far as the 35 project. Mr. Geyer expressed a lot of concern at that meeting Friday yeah. as far as um, uh, the, the design's uh, ability to increase or decrease uh, the level of flooding. So, but oh, you guys are. What they're proposing and what I understand of it, it will add to the problem unless other things are done on downstream. Right. Okay. Okay. Right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. <coughs> Chief Vanden Boss. Good afternoon, board. I have a couple items before you today. The first is a uh, follow up. Uh, for a board request regarding the uh, marks implementation, there were a number of questions a meeting or two back. Uh, Chief Heaster has prepared a, a brief for you um, that's attached to your report. Um, there is one, well, I just two corrections that are related to each other uh, that I'd like you to make. Uh, if you have, uh, have a 
something you can take a note with. Um, the PNR Communications PO uh, that's listed there, it's the uh, fourth PO down. Um, he had the wrong starting balance. He had the 2014 starting balance and not the PO starting balance. The correct number for that should be $22,073.85. So it's 22073.85. What number is it replacing? It's replacing the starting balance of 7584. Oh, okay. okay. So it's not 20 it's 22,000 or 2000. 22,073. Okay. okay. Significant difference. Yes, and it does change the uh, uh, percentage of uh, projected budget costs that have been expended from 87 to 88 and that's in the last paragraph. First number, last paragraph should be changed from 87 to 88. Say that one again, I'm sorry. Uh, if you go to the last paragraph, um, the 87% of the projected, bu right. projected okay. project should be corrected to 88%. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so, along oh. with, I'm sorry, I'll go ahead and finish. I was going to say, along with that, we had the bi weekly report, and I can cover or answer any questions on it. Um, I've been asking for a master plan on this communications program now for over two years and I've never seen it. This is as close as I've seen one and to get 87% of your budget, can you, um, you don't have to do it now, can you give me uh, a figure what the the project budget was and, and how you would how you know you're at 87 percent of that budget that you had projected for that program how'd you come to knowing that you're at 87 percent i believe of, if you have your budget the, the perch in this starting balance of the purchase orders that is the 87 88 corrected 88 percent but i mean you had to have a figure to to know what what the project cost is going to be if you know you're 87 percent there yes sir it's the starting balance of the purchase orders i believe so Can if, I, add this if I add those up if i add those up chief it comes to one million one forty seven four forty one okay. and change I, okay i did not do the math so, so if i do that and then i show that there's one hundred and forty two thousand eight fifty eight remaining that has not been spent yet is that okay. correct if i add that it? that sounds correct i did not do the math myself okay Okay. And then that should lead you to the 87, 88%. Okay. I'm almost there. Now, okay, now, now what else I was asking for is in your plan, how do you know we need this stuff? I mean, how do you know you need to buy this stuff? There has to be a plan to, to, and mapped out. We know you're this far along, that far along. When you buy these items, at what point in time you buy them, that's what I'm asking for is the plan that maps out this communication program and and the date of these purchases and all that I've been asking for it and I've not there's been purchases been approved without a plan I've not supported it but I don't see how we can spend this kind of money without a plan um, that's been presented to the board that's that's my take so I've been asking for a plan obviously there's a purchase plan and there's a system in place, obviously, that knows we have to buy these items at a certain uh, time along the way. Um, so there is a plan there somewhere, and all I've been asking for it, and I've not seen the plan. Was that the plan that Chief Easter presented to us at least two or three times? The information has been presented a number of times in my recollection. Uh, Chief okay. Easter has done all right. All right. Times, so. I've asked for the plan. Obviously, you don't have the plan, or you would tell me what the plan is. You would present I the do plan. not have it printed out. I've been asked for the plan. Right? If he's is made that? the presentation three or four right. times, that's what I'm asking for. I've, I've been asking for it for a year and a half. Yeah. Do we have the, the that PowerPoint presentation? Because I know you were here at least one of the times. Uh, do we have the PowerPoint presentation somewhere? If I had the plan, why would I ask? I you? do not know, Mr. Paxson. Yes, Okay, can we forward that uh, plan that was presented to us at the meeting to all the PowerPoint presentations to all three of the trustees, or maybe all the elected officials, whoever is on the distribution list, 
so we all mm -hmm. see again what the plan was that was presented. The other question I believe you asked, Mr. Paxson, is why was there a $95,000 purchase made uh, recently? 90000 It was something in that, I believe that was the number. But in any case, you asked. And so the, I believe I got the answer. The answer was all these pieces had been, uh, that they had not been purchased. They had been planned and ordered. And we do not pay for anything until we get what we have ordered. That piece that for which that bill was paid was paid because it was, the pieces were on order. We then got them and they came in and that bill was paid once we got the, uh, uh, the equipment that we had ordered. We did not, even though we ordered it all up front, it didn't come all at the same time and we only pay for it when we get it, which I think is prudent. Well, I asked him the question to begin, but not you. I know, and but so, it was at a meeting, and so well, I was at the meeting, I'm so sorry. That, that's all right, and I mean, if you had to answer then, you could have answered me. I there. didn't, I asked answer. afterwards. He could have answered me, then he still had to answer my question, so I'm gonna let it drop at that, but I've been asking for this. Now, what I do want is just a basic, a basic map of this. I was given two boxes of stuff when I asked for a simple plan. Two boxes of stuff was dumped in front of me that says, here you go. And in those boxes was nothing but a bunch of um, technical data about radios this, radios that. And when I sifted through it, I had about that much of information that might even have come close to anything at all other than technical information about radios. So I'm going to ask again. I'm going to keep asking until I get this because I'm not going to prove any purchase for me. Uh, you know, if you want, if the rest of the board wants to prove it without a without a plan, then you go right ahead. But I'm being prudent here. I want to see a plan, a simple plan, what the original projected cost was. So we don't even know if we're within the budget of this whole program. I know we spend a lot of money in communication, a lot of money. A lot of this money that's spent on this communication came off a levy in 2009. I didn't see any communication um, information on that levy presented to the public. I saw fire trucks, buildings, but I didn't see anything about spending a million plus dollars on a levy from the levy on a communication project. So I'm asking for a plan one more time um, for this communication program. And if you know the plan, if you have the plan, Carol, I would really love to have you give me a copy of that. Because you've been, probably on the you've been approving these purchases all along. Exactly, okay. because I okay. heard the plan, I followed the plan, I was pleased with the plan, and was uh -huh. willing to go ahead with the plan. So it, we will get at least the, what was presented uh -huh. to the board, and I believe that does include most of it. Now, I don't know exactly, because my memory isn't as good as Mr. Press's when he sees things, but I believe it listed most of the things, why we were doing it, how we were doing it, what we were purchasing, why we were purchasing it. And so, if we could get that presentation sent to all of us, uh, if you want to print it out, I guess they could print out I would, the... I would like that, because I would like to share with other people in the community that have an interest in this program. Well, okay. so, so I mean, that's all the overall program. Is that the PowerPoint? Yeah. At least one copy printed out. Do you want to print it out? One would be okay on Electronics. the iPad. Electronics. Fine. Looks like one printed. I see you nodding. So I'm saying process. email. I don't know okay. why you would want to print off that thing, but that's just me. Yeah. You. So you've seen it, Ms. Harris. Oh yeah, it was three times. I know that Mr. Heaster has presented. I can attest to that. As to whether it's what. He wanted. Whether right. I don't remember whether there were numbers in it, that I don't remember. So I, I can attest to the fact that yes, Mr. Mr. Heaster has absolutely presented a presentation, but whether there were numbers in it, I really don't know. Right, and it may may or may not satisfy what you're asking for. I understand. Sometimes you can get a presentation that doesn't answer the question. Right. So, and I understand that. So. Well, I'll just like know what we're spending and, the money for. To what end? To what end we're spending okay. the money? That's all I'm saying. Okay. So. If we're on board and we have a direction on a program, we're many right? as trustees were review, review the programs and we have, we approve finance for the programs. 
I'm trying to be prudent and do what I said I was going to do, and I'm asking for information so I can feel good about making decisions in this program. I know nothing, nothing about it. Okay. I've been stonewalled. I've been stonewalled. No, sir, you have not. I've been stonewalled no, because I've asked this. That's an opinion. This. That's what you feel. That is it's my opinion. It's too bad you been, feel like because that. Because I've asked for this stuff, and all it would take. We submit the information to the board. A yes. bulletproof, yes. a bullet, a bulleted item that says this, 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 and this is the overall projected is budget it? of this project. Are you asking me to create something that does not currently exist, or send information that has been? It should, it should, you should be able to yes. create it. Then what we have in the purchase of the original purchase. You should be able to create it in a layman's form, all right? And if I have questions, I'll come to you and ask questions. Chief, I would like just, if you can, for my purpose, if you can just resend what has already been provided, yes, sir. use that as a baseline so we at least then can determine if there's more questions we need to ask above and beyond that. We, we're all on the same page at that point. Yes, sir. Um, and Process-wise, my understanding is we approve a budget. So this item, this project was budgeted. We approved a budget for this item. I didn't approve it. I was asking for this. Correct. I was yes. asking for this a plan for this, this budget. This was passed in December of uh, 2012, um, and uh, the project manager for this, as, as a three-o vote, was to place the uh, chair or the president, which was uh, Mr. Bob Glazier, as the project manager for it. Right. the final purchase game. Uh, the approval of the entire project came in December of 12. Okay. So, and at this point, um, your understanding, Chief, is that we have spent less than what we budgeted for yes. the project. And the okay. final expense, even after the completion of the project, will be under what the original okay. budget was. And, yes, and if we budget a million dollars for a total project and we have 10 expenditures of 100000 each, those expenditures are theoretically pre-approved, or we bring those hundred thousand dollar expenditures back for approval each time. I'm asking you. I think I know the answer. I just want clarification. When, um, in this case, all all the purchase orders that you see in front of you were approved for those dollar amounts. Okay. The specific as the things get ordered and checks are cut, those are not re-approved. Correct. Right. Okay. So when you see a check in front of you, this is. Uh, but when Assuming I see there's a large right. check you saw, I said, well, we didn't approve this. Right. It was already approved at some point. But when we open a purchase order, it was approved. That's Absolutely. Correct. It wouldn't have been opened. It would never have been opened it without it. Okay. So everything that has a PO attached to this has been approved. May have may not have been approved by Mr. Paxson, but it was approved. By majority. By majority. By majority. majority of the board okay. in the December meeting. And then as, there, as draws occur off of that purchase order, those assembly are simply coming through as information only. That's correct. Yep. Okay. So I just make sure I understand it. From a process flow chart, which I think is what Mr. Paxson is looking for, um, of how you're going to an implementation plan. That yes. is something that Mr. That, that Chief Easter has. Exactly. So an implementation plan. Implementation plan. Yeah, that's the master is plan. another term for master plan. So here's a schedule of how we're going to roll this program out. And I'm, a, I'm presuming. I can only presume that that follows a prescribed uh, implementation plan that other communities have followed as well. Correct. And okay. the, the notation at the bottom of this is that it is 90% completed at this point. Okay. All right. So but the good news is that it's 90% complete. Yes, sir. If you can just follow up with information so we can establish that baseline of information that's already known. Yes, sir. Um, to be known by everybody. And then we can kind of work from there. Yes, if that sir. helps. I, I understand, Mr. Paxson. I understand you. So. I have one other concern with this too, and 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 the, the approval, the board has the authority to um, to override the uh, the PO and, and drop it because it was done with me and, and the project we're into right now. Now, here here was a whole basis for this whole this whole move supposedly to the the P25 platform was that it's uh, it's not a sole proprietary. Um, uh, issue anymore that it opens it up for competition and pricing and all that. Open up, that's correct. Right. And so, but we've not seen uh, uh, any of this. When, when we, when you bring things to to the table, we've not seen the price difference. So we could, as as a board, could say, um, you have two. You don't have two items here. You're making one purchase through Motorola only. We've not seen any comparative figures from Motorola to the next radio company to whatever. We've not seen those figures. So how do we know that we're getting the best deal for the for the dollar? 
that's not entirely <laughs> true. So we are reusing. Well, number it's true of because that's how I perceive it to be so true. Okay, yeah, that's how I perceive it to okay, be, and that's why I'm asking the question. Okay, there's a misunderstanding then because we have used and our system currently has Bearcom equipment, has EF Johnson equipment, or excuse me, EF Johnson, which was Bearcom and is now another vendor, as stated in here. We have Maycom equipment, which is the old radio system that is P25 compliant that's been reused. And the reason we didn't go with other vendors for the new equipment that was purchased was because of the competitive nature, Motorola came in with the best pricing by not only meeting their state bid pricing, but beating their state bid pricing by, I want to say it was 30 or 40% off list. So we got an exceptional deal at the time of the purchase, which is what the entire, virtually the entire county went to when it happened. That includes the sheriff's office, that includes the county departments, uh, that includes city of Xenia, city of Fairborn, all the other agencies around here took a similar advantage. There were a few that did not, I believe Sugar Creek did not, um, Spring Valley may or may not, I'm not certain, but uh, because the pricing was so aggressive, because of the open market, we got those deals on Motorola. Doesn't mean that the prices weren't examined from other vendors, it meant that the best price was Motorola. Just because we went with the Motorola product doesn't mean that it was not the best price. And we were able to reuse other vendors' equipment because it is a P25 open source platform. So those pieces of equipment that were approved and were set up to be used have been reused. And it's documented in here. Matter of fact, we're waiting. So one of the challenges with the open source, interestingly enough, is the vendor for Harris, uh, which is the old Maycom equipment, which is P25 compliant, a large amount of our stuff is P25 compliant, they have not met the state security requirements to be on the system. The only thing that's holding us up from reusing that equipment right now is the initial vendor, who pres presumably would have um, been one of the competitors you're referring to, has not been forthcoming in getting their equipment certified to go on the state system. So we have it, we have it in hand, it's paid for, it, we were using it on the old system, but they have not made it security secure enough to meet the security requirements of the state to be used on. Now we're expecting that to happen in the next month or so. Well, part of that is because we're ahead of the game. Absolutely. I mean, the state system is, is a 2018 deal, so there's a big run to get on the state system now for some reason. So we bought all this stuff up front. So maybe if we wait a little longer, could maybe... You, the, the, could you restate that? We bought this stuff up front. I didn't follow what you meant there. I mean, there's a move. We didn't have to make the move to get on a mark system until 2018. That's that's when the well, hammer was going to come down. Actually, we did. The, the county was getting out of the county radio system. It has been um, basically taken out of service, so there was no radio Now it system. has, but it... Yeah, but it, yeah the county voted in November. I know the county. 2012. I know that, that, but so. the mark... The, the marks deadline, the drop debt deadline was 2018. The, for P25 national That's compliance right. was That's 2018. Right. Yeah. The county who <laughs> owned the system uh, was getting away from that in I know they were getting away 12. from it because there was, a, yeah. there was a, a, a decision to move yeah. towards the marks right. instead of uh, building out the they, WNS. They received, the county received bids on a owning the system on a Motorola backbone system, going with the mark system. I know. They received a Harris and I believe there was I don't recall reading yeah, that. There's one they, more. So the county commissioners kind of said, we're, we're getting out of the radio business. We're going with the state and partnering with the state. And there's different levels as, you know, Montgomery County is now looking at which which level to go with. Do they own okay. the system or do they share it? Right. So all the stuff that. you're telling me should be in writing in some kind of plan. That's yes, what I'm asking those, for. Those yeah, that's what I'm asking for. Those presentations were made. The boards. Okay, Project well, then, manager was all right. Well, then, Glazier. if I ask for it, Alex, why won't why wasn't it given to me if it exists? I've asked for it for your name. Uh, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, we're why wasn't it given to me when I exist? We're going to because I'm being stonewalled. That's all. All this information has been sent to the entire board in the past. We will reset that per the board. If you so, can, can, could you give us also the dates so that they were presented to the board? We'll see if I can figure out what those were. Or just re forward the original email. I don't think the emails that we done here. Okay. The original will be fine. That's a starting point. That's all we know. Okay. Any other questions regarding the marks? Yeah, thank you. Um, just a couple quick things on the bi-weekly report. Um, we've been obviously in negotiations. I don't think we're doing anything specific today with that. Our fact-finding hearing is scheduled for September 9th, uh, so we're in preparation for that. If we're not able to uh, reach agreement through fact finding, we will be going to conciliation uh, 
shortly after that. So we'll keep the board up to date. Um, the board will have to make a decision whether to um, affirmatively accept a fact-finding report, to um, passively accept it, which is to take no action on it, or to affirmatively dis deny or dispute it, um, which that third option would then push us to, uh, to conciliation, which will be binding at that point. So we'll uh, bring the board up to, up to uh, date on not only the information, the fact-finding report, but then also what your specific options are. But we will have a, short, a narrow window that we'll have to work with you on that. Um, Organizational analysis, we're continuing to work with the uh, NOVAC group and responding to their request for information, so we'll keep them busy there. Uh, I mentioned in here the Xenia Tower renovation. Uh, there is a water tower that is the central point for data connections uh, back to Green Central. They're doing routine maintenance painting and, and that sort of thing on the tower, so they have to take all the equipment off of it for a period of time, replace the equipment back on there, and so uh, we'll be getting a new cable basically out of that, so that's the benefit we have there. Uh, they will be scheduling the move because there will be some short outages uh, during the transition periods in there. Uh, the Walmart incident obviously uh, occurred. Um, I'm sure you've probably been very much aware of what's going on in the community with that. The fire department had kind of a very secondary role, which is good for us. Um, we did make the two transports out of there. Probably the big thing is the, uh, the level at which we were able to work with the police department. Um, this came very shortly on the heels of our regular training with the police department which is basically three days three eight hour days of very aggressive uh, practical exercises uh, working in an active shooter environment uh, dealing with how the police operations work what our operations are and um, it's one of those times when our operations are a little different than usual so uh, the crews are able to use some of the uh, the ballistic vests and things that we've recently purchased during that training um, I don't believe they had to use them on the incident itself because it was over so quickly but uh, we were able to ins institute a unified command uh, we were on the common radio system which is obviously a huge asset for us and we've already uh, completed a, a post incident critique with the police department to look at how our plan worked in conjunction with the actions there and uh, it sounds like everything went very well I, of course, was on a town floor, so I found out about it sitting at a Minnesota Twins game. So, um, Other than that, the last big thing is we are going to have the uh, Battle of the Badges Blood Drive. Uh, if you are interested in donating blood, I'd encourage you to come out and support the fire department there. Um, and then along with that, Bob Evans um, graciously offered to have a fundraiser to support the fire department auxiliary uh, for those three days, August 25th through 27th, and they'll be donating 15% uh, of sales to the auxiliary three days um, that was not solicited that's something that they offered so that was a, uh, a huge boon to us from the community so we appreciate that chief on the walmart incident you're satisfied that we have adequate equipment to handle that now as far as number of vests at this point, yes sir um, in the future is uh, we digest some of the information that was uh, covered at fri which is uh, where our two chief officers just returned from uh, they may have additional information, but based off of our recent incident and the training we've done, we believe we have the proper uh, amount and type of equipment. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No questions or comment. In the I, uh, I just have a question about the community room usage. Yes, sir. I think we should have some kind of a policy on the usage of that room. I've heard there's a business using that room to use that to use that as part of their business. I mean, community groups and some some business using it for for doing business. I think that's where the line should be drawn. I mean, I don't think anybody ought to use it for business purposes. Yeah. Which business but, uh, is that? The, I I'd rather not say right now. I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay. We, we actually discussed a policy a few meetings back. Mm -hmm. we, we, About. Walked, we walked through that. Yeah. Um, we would discuss whether we should charge or not. Right. I think well, we should charge. Yeah. Right. And I don't think we. Did we, not come, did we come, come to a conclusion on that? I don't recall. We, we, I believe we deferred yeah. that decision. But yeah. we, we, we talked about uh, whether it was a non profit, essentially, or a for profit type. Yeah. Type use. Right. Yeah, so we have one long standing for profit that has used it, but not for direct sales uses, but for uh, like um, training, personal development, and, and that level of training. Things like yeah, that. and they have uh, quite often donated right. so for what that's worth. And I, I think that was the discussion that we had that that particular use um, was a strong supporter as well with, with donations. 
But yeah, if the board has a, a policy that you'd like to recommend, uh, we can certainly draft something up in accordance with that and move forward. So. Mr. Zarif, if we have a if we have a current we have a current written policy for no, or is it's, it just, it's an informal. It's, it's informal. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, again, it's been one of those that's kind of evolved along the lines of who's requested it and if it okay. seems to fit the, the appropriate okay. use of the community. Okay. Does um, uh, can we can we just uh, request maybe what uh, Wright State or any of the other community type based that have rooms that are used by the public either for nonprofit or for profit and just find out what they would charge for something like that or if they charge not that we want to follow but um, at least we have a baseline the, the key I think what you're proposing is that it's not abused uh, yes. and that's yeah. paid for by taxpayers yes. and my I, I think with the meet when we had this on the when we talked about this as far as conceptually creating a policy I think one of my questions was people for her groups from outside of the community using that uh, facility and they may not be contributing to the tax dollars that are paying for it yeah uh, I and I think there was an in, there was an increased cleaning cost and, and maintenance cost there's definitely a maintenance and upkeep cost um, we've had equipment costs uh, just maintaining things if you know, the mouse disappears here or pointer there so um, relatively minor, but it does happen. Sure. Um, I don't know that there's anything nefarious so much as maybe somebody picks it up with a mistake or whatever. Um, but uh, so far, all the groups I know of are Beaver Creek groups. So they're either citizens in the community who are paying taxes that way or businesses in the community who are paying taxes that way. Okay. Um, although, again, the interesting dynamic with the, the change from the tangible personal like community activities tax puts a slightly different spin on it but um, right the cat, is, the cat is purely for the privilege of doing business in the state <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, so but they're they're all paying essentially their fair share i guess may be the best way to think about it okay. if uh, we don't have any groups who are from purely outside the community that are actively using it that i know of um, we would I, I would think we would say no to requests like that i don't know that we've had any requests like that okay it's the Dayton Daily News, August 9th, which is a Saturday, had an article, it's actually in the second B, page four, from the Columbus Dispatch, where they talked about their, I guess, essentially innovation of getting the gurneys for 1,600 pounds. And as I read that, I said, my goodness, they didn't know Beaver Creek Township has done that for a long time. I thought you could put this with your papers and highlight the fact that Thank we you. innovated early. When we found a need, we responded to the need in a timely fashion, I believe. Okay, legal advisor. No report. No report. <laughs> Trustees? I had nothing. Fiscal officer? No, thank you. Okay, the legal invoices, we have one. Were there any other questions as far as other than for future invoices you'd like to know who made the, who made uh, the Yeah, yeah, just initials by them is okay right. with me. That's, okay. that's all right. And predicated on the understanding that whoever made that contact was authorized by the township administrator to make the contact. Yes. So based on that, I'll make a motion to approve invoice number Sorry, my contacts are fuzzy. Invoice number 2616353, dated July 25th, 2014, from Taft, Statinius, and Hollister, in the amount of $2,664. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Mr. Paxson. Yes. Ms. Gratt. Yes. Is there anything else to come before the board? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Some? Yep. Second. Mr. Paxson. Yes. Mr. Kratz. Yes. Ms. Kratz. 